So in any case, as devotees, there's the big difference between the devotees and the non-devotees. Even though they may seem like they're doing the same thing, they're both working, they're both uh, buying things in the stores, shopping. I remember shopping in a supermarket and selling Bhagavad Gita. Sorry, I wasn't shopping. I was selling Bhagavad Gita's, maybe not even Bhagavad Gita's, but Krishna conscious literature. I don't remember what book I was selling. So I approach this lady and I'm showing her the book and she says, are you sure you're supposed to be here? And I said, I'm positive I'm supposed to be here. And I was didn't say this, but I was thinking you're the one that shouldn't be here is buying all these things for sense gratification. But I didn't say that because I wanted to try to sell a book. But she, when I, the way I said it, she was definitely convinced that I was positive I was supposed to be there. Of course, the store didn't give me permission to be there. But Krishna wanted me there because he was trying to sell, sell his books. I was curious. So how did you deal with, uh, you know, when you were distributing books and, you know, that lady was actually threatening you kind of, why are you here? So where did you get that courage and did that prevent you from further? Oh, oh in those days we knew everything. We were so confident. This is what Krishna wants me to do. There was mm. no doubt whatsoever. It may have been naive. We, we had no fear. We, we knew Krishna. We really did. I mean, I was in a, a, a school and, a, you know, distributing books at a college. And there was four of us. I was in charge of the party and we got caught. The police, they caught us. They brought us to the dean. And in the dean's office, he, he wants to know what we're doing here. So I told him that there's a story that the Himalayan mountains were going to give birth. And so many, there was this rumor going around. So, so many people went to the hill of the Himalayan mountains when the, when the mountains were going to give birth. They're so magnanimous. They're so great. They're going to give birth. What is it going to be? And then there was a little earthquake and a pack of rats came out of a, of a hole in the Himalayan mountain. And then, so I said, in these schools, people look up to these schools. They think so much is going to come out. And what comes out? A pack of rats. So we're here distributing books to give them some spiritual knowledge. And they said, the police are there. And the dean was there. And the dean just told them, just get them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we had no fear. Uh, I mean, we knew this. There was no doubt mm -hmm. that we might be wrong or we maybe this is what this isn't what krishna wants we knew without a doubt this is what krishna wants another time at we're doing a fair at uh in i'm not positive i think it was the big e but i don't know but we had permission to do it and and they they kept restricting us you can't do this you can't do that so we we had a meeting with the the leaders of the fair there was a bunch of them there. I don't know, 10 people. And I said, I gave them this story, which they thought I was completely nuts at first, but then they kind of figured it out that, that there was a, a man who was building, building a new house. And in the new house is a bathroom, but you should not use the bathroom until you first do the worship in the house. There's puja, but they don't know puja. So worship in the house. And one person there he said he has to use the bathroom. He has to pass stool. He has to pass stool really bad. And can I use the bathroom? And then he kept saying no. But then he finally said, okay, you can use the bathroom. But if you pass, if, if, you, if you can use the bathroom, but if you pass one drop of urine, I'm going to beat you with this stick. And they all looked at me like I'm completely nuts. So I said, you're doing the same thing to us here. You're saying we can do the fair. We have permission to do it. And you're letting us do it. But you're giving us so many restrictions, we can't do it. And then they realized they, these guys are not as stupid as they look. <laughs> but we, we had no fear. I don't remember mm. ever in the beginning, no matter what happened. We knew Krishna was protecting us. And, and not just Krishna's protecting us. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Mm. So I don't know how you get that. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, a lot of devotees were made 
uh, when when there was preaching with that risk for example in russia and everywhere they yeah. kind of uh, you know went against the government but of course not face to face but in a secret way and preached and did, it did make a lot of devotees but at the same time there is this fear of breaking law uh, so i guess how do we navigate that uncertainty how do you navigate what how do we navigate that uncertainty i mean when to when it's okay and when it's not right. okay well yeah. i think in the beginning when you're naive you're positive krishna gives you protection just like a little child a little child that is feels completely protected by his parents but as he goes older he's not he doesn't have that same feeling any uh, anymore you know he 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 grows he's more independent and as he becomes more independent he doesn't have that protection from his parents so similarly as we become more independent and depending on ourselves we don't have that same confidence and krishna has not given us that protection but if you actually feel it totally believe it he does protect you it's not you you're not you you may have to act in certain ways to do certain things but you are completely protected and you know you are if you're fully dependent on him like a child who's fully dependent on his parents but somehow we don't but thinking of russia i just uh, heard this thing where this man was uh i guess he worked for the russian government but he also got a little involved in krishna consciousness and he spoke on behalf of the devotees he he said he gave two points of why we should in, let these let these devotees do what they're doing they have nothing against the government there is nothing at all they're speaking against the government at all and the other thing is they take vows to be vegetarian they don't eat any meat and he said at that time there wasn't much meat in russia so if you get a whole bunch of people not eating meat that would be better for the whole country <laughs> that was his two arguments <laughs> yeah i i i desire to i mean i desire to go on book distribution with you prabhu i'm serious i'm not joking i do need that empowerment from you one day if you can take i, I don't have any when our, when krishna left arjun had no potency i'm i feel like that when i go out on book distribution i can't do anything anymore i was really really good not really good compared to other devotees but i was i'd go out every day and i i i, I could do good i remember doing collecting 90 dollars a day selling books and this was in the 70s when 90 dollars was a lot more than it is six days a week i would do that it was a lot and it was a lot of work physically exhausting but we wouldn't we were very happy and we didn't keep a penny for ourselves mm-hmm. anyway that's you know you know it's krishna and prabhupad somehow or other just convinced us we had full faith in prabhupad and he'd say something and we'd accept it you know to the degree in which you surrender to that degree you'll be rewarded accordingly yeah thank you very I'm much not, for sharing I'm, this yeah, yeah but i'm not you. as surrendered as i used to be i used to now i'm more independent now i'm a little scared <laughs> but at least i did for a while really surrender for mm-hmm. quite a while and everyone was you do anything yeah it it's such a glorious service i mean it, it it's the book distributors you know who spread this movement i i feel really grateful for for what you did prabhu and, and wonderful stories and i'm serious i do want to you know get my, my wife and daughter they do a good job but i am always like are we breaking the law are we bre- i just sit down and chant and they distribute <laughs> i never think about breaking the law we do anything we go anywhere we go inside stores all day i was inside a store and the guy kicked me out he said he said uh, oh, no i was in in front of the store i was in front of the store and he came out and he was so angry and he says i want you out of here in 10 minutes you better be gone so i just kept distributing he came out he said i told you you got to leave i said you said i can do it for 10 more minutes 
<laughs> upset. <laughs> he said, in 10 minutes, he wants me out of here. So I thought he'd let me do it for 10 more minutes. <laughs> that's what I, that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we got arrested. It's not like we didn't go to jail. We go to jail for one day, you know. It's no mm -hmm. big deal. As a matter of fact, in India, we were being criticized by the smarter Brahmins because our neck beads have this clip that you open up. Now, mm -hmm. originally, our neck beads weren't like that. You would tie them. But when you go to jail, you have to take them off. So we, we had to cut them. And then you got to get new beads. So uh -huh. then we came up with these clips and that's why they started putting these clips. So they were criticizing us that we take our beads off. That's why we have this clip. And then they explained to him why we have the clip. So when we go to jail, we can take them off and then we can put them right back on after we get out of jail. So many devotees were arrested. Hmm. I just went for my, not just went a couple of years ago, maybe for some card for travel so that you can go quickly through the lines. I don't even know what you call it. Yeah, yeah, the star card. I don't know if it's a star card. I know Naranjana Swami has it. He was telling me about it. So I decided oh, the, I'll do it. The, the TSA. Um, yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, when I went, I, uh, he has me down that I was arrested for trespassing and he can't give it to me. And I said, trespass, I said, I was just selling Hare Krishna books in a, in a mall and they got arrested me. Anyway, the guy gave it to me after I explained to him. He said, I'm not supposed to because that's one of like a serious offense, trespassing. Mm -hmm. But he gave it to me because he did believe me. And I did look like, I mean, I had my head pretty much shaved. I got some hair now, but he was a nice guy. That wasn't much of a threat. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so many times, but it was always quick. Another time we went to for this, we went to the courthouse because a devotee was arrested the night before and we went to get him out the next day. So we're there dressed in dhotis, shaved heads, kurtas, uh, bead bags, and we're all chanting Japa. And, uh, they, they come over to us and they talk to us, you know, nice, you know, and then they, then they said, what do you got in the bag? They thought we had guns in the bags. <laughs> <laughs> they never seen devotees before, you know, so we just travel all over the country. Mm -hmm. We got arrested in, oh, in New Jersey, uh, North New Jersey. Oh, it's a big town, big city. Oh, if I saw the map. I don't remember. I think it starts with a P, but I'm not positive. Anyway, we got arrested in this, this city and uh, all of us got arrested and they never seen anything like us. This was in the early seventies. And so he asked where we're from. I said, we're from Boston. You know, I said, he says, I, I said, did I know you? I said, yeah, you can call the, call the Boston police. They know us or something. So, then afterwards, they, they're letting us go. And I asked, did you call to the Boston police? And he said, yes. And I said, what did they say? He said, you're crazy, but harmless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I cannot believe that you got arrested somewhere. You don't know where it is. I mean, that, that that's in itself is oh, unbelievable. I've, <laughs> I, I've got arrested a lot in a lot of places. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I could tell you just stories about jail. In in uh, one, this I do remember in Provincetown, we got arrested a whole bunch of us because it was the Boston devotees and the New York devotees, and they arrested us all. And uh, what the nice thing is, the a lawyer, he was uh, I don't know how he found out, but he was maybe a. Uh, I don't know what kind of lawyer, but he met the devotees before and he came to the temple and he had prashadam and he helped us. So we all got out of jail without any problem. We were overnight, but the next day we got out without having to pay any fines. Why is that? What? 
Why did you have not to pay fines? Because we had a lawyer. Oh. Was it a devotee lawyer? No, it was a lawyer, but he knew, he met the devotees and he had prashadam from the devotees. Oh, so, so he decided he, to support you. Yeah, he helped us. Mm. Normally you got to pay a fine. Even when you have to pay a fine, I'm still wanted in that same town that I don't even remember because I never paid the fine. They gave, you know, I had like a hundred dollar fine, which I never paid. So... I got to think of the name of the town, but anyway. So I advise everyone, please go out on book distribution. Don't have any fears, get arrested, join the <laughs> club. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, you are worshiping somebody who was born in a jail. What can we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where he was born. That's pretty bad. At least I wasn't born in a jail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for making me uh, remember some of these funny things that happened in the past. Thank you. Thank you for these stories. This, this gives all of us faith who haven't seen those times, the importance of book distribution. Yeah, everybody did so many things. It's, and, and, and I know everybody pretty much was arrested who went on Sankatan. Anyway. I, I, even I didn't hear about the Big E. This is the first time I'm hearing it. About the what? <laughs> the Big E one? I had not heard about that oh, one. Yeah, that story. Because that, Prabhupada one, said yeah. that. Prabhupada said it when in Mexico City, there was a whole bunch of people and they wanted to hear Prabhupada speak. And the government didn't want them, him to speak. So they gave him permission to speak, but he can't use any amplification. <laughs> <laughs> so then Prabhupada told that story about the passing stool. You can pass <laughs> stool for one drop of urine and I'll beat you with this stick. <laughs> and you used that story, huh? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I'm sure, you hit the point home really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely had so much faith, and I do see it as 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 innocent children. We didn't know anything, but we totally accepted. We are completely protected. Nothing can happen. Whatever happens, it's all Krishna's arrangement. I mean, things happened, but we didn't think anything was bad. Nothing really bad happened. We go to jail, big deal. Okay, we're gonna end here. And any other quick questions or quick answers to questions? I have a quick quiz, bro. Oh, a quiz again. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Not many questions, but I can. <laughs> No, don't ask how many times Paramount Prabhu was arrested. He's been to jail. Yeah. I don't even know that. <laughs> Nor do I know where. I know in Texas. I know in North Carolina. Oh, wow. That's another one. I'll just quickly tell you this real quick. We're chanting Joppa in a shopping center. We're dressed as devotees. We get about three or four police cars come and surround us. We have our van. They come out with shotguns. And they, they have us against our van, they search us. And, and then I ask him, what, what they, they, someone called up and said we were gonna rob the bank. I said, if we were gonna rob a bank, why would we dress like this? <laughs> <laughs> this is North Carolina. This was in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, anyway, then they tell us that we have to leave, leave the this, this, this city limits. We can't stay here. I said, why? He said, because we'll arrest you. I said, what are you going to arrest us on? He said, indecent exposure. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so we left. 